seriously. Oh, look at your little eyelash. I know, right? You're so funny. Good Friday morning. I am heading out uh, to a few calls today. The first one up is a herd visit on a new client. And I have a few other things to do with the feedlots. Cattle to export, an animal that has an injury, and also some post-mortems. So let's talk about the new client thing for a second. A little tiny intermission at the new client's place. I was riding along in a gator with two standard schnauzers and it was the most spectacular morning ever. So one common thing that happens at our practice and I assume other practices as well is uh, non-clients coming in to purchase pharmaceuticals, so prescription pharmaceuticals. And usually it's pretty innocent and fairly benign. Uh, most of the time they're asking for modified live vaccines, which are prescription products. Now in order to prescribe and dispense a prescription product, at least in the jurisdiction that I'm in, what you need to do is have a valid vet-client relationship, meaning that I've spent time at his place, I've examined his animals, I understand his herd's needs, I understand his vaccination protocols, his treatment protocols, and I identify the medical need of the prescription products, as well as writing prescriptions for the ones that he needs, he or she. And then once that prescription is in place that is backed by a valid vet-client relationship and a medical record, then I can dispense said prescription products to that client. And I continue that relationship in terms of determining the medical need and maintaining a valid vet client relationship. So at times we'll get clients in and we'll explain this, that this is bound by law, this is set by our regulatory body, that we must establish this need. And a lot of producers get a little a little up in arms, which I can understand. They just need to vaccinate their cattle to keep them healthy. But on the flip side, there's there's really nothing that I can do besides doing all of the things that I that I talked about. So in some cases, uh, non-clients that are, are walk-ups will just get mad when we explain we need to establish a medical need and prescriptions before we can dispense and we always say we can absolutely dispense just like a regular pharmacy if your existing veterinarian uh, provides us with a prescription just like when you go to a pharmacy i understand the frustration absolutely you just want to vaccinate your damn cows and you can. But in some situations like today, the producer understood completely. I did a complete protocol and vaccination review with him based off of all of his uh, previous problems and his management style. We talked about his problems in terms of, of some of the challenges he's been facing within his herd and then I drove right out and I did a herd visit and took a history on that herd in terms of their feed and their water sources and when they calf and and all the types of problems that he could potentially run into. We were looking at feed bags and feed test results and and I established the, that medical need. So it went really, really well and it, it really is so simple. But uh, the client has to be receptive and the veterinarian as well. The veterinarian has to be receptive to be able to, to invest time into the new client as well. Okay, I'm back at home for lunch and then I'm finishing up the day out on the road. Finn, did you see how nice those schnauzers were? They're so nice. Should we get sh Do you want to get another standard schnauzer, Finn? Do you want a schnauzer? Just minis? Okay. No standards allowed. Autofocus, autofocus, autofocus. Cheese. Cheese. How was your morning? Um, you that video of us together. Oh, that's interesting. Hey, hey, show me your work dance. Work, 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 work. Can we get in that? Work, 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 work. 
quick, then, quick, quick. Now show me your bestest cut. My cut? Yeah. Now show me your bestest flip. A flip? Yeah. Now show me how do you train. Train? Yeah. I just feel the music in me. Okay, Dad. Now, how do you fix cows? Hmm. It depends what's wrong with the cows. I don't know. Look at the sound. Look at the sound. What's wrong with the cows? Look, look at the sound. No, Dad. Show me how you can take care of the baby. Show me. Now show me how can you take Fanny for a walk. Now, Dad, show me how you internet. How I internet? Yeah. Good morning. Welcome to the vlog. Today I'll be out doing some postmortems, and maybe I'll get some semen testing in today. Neve is still sleeping. Okay, quick lunch. I was there for like 20 minutes. Now I'm on the road. Things to look at. You see my camera set up? You see that? It takes a very special person to walk around with your arm stretched out and a camera on a tripod pointing at your face while wearing Snapchat glasses and a drone overhead. What? Okay, I just pulled up to the postmortem pit. It has been crazy windy here lately. Look at this. So the postmortem pit here is wind fence, four sides of wind fence. Look, look at that. wind fence has been destroyed. I've been coming here several times a week, every week for the last six years and I've never seen anything like that. Normal fence, bad fence. <laughs> Atypical interstitial pneumonia. The second guy died of the same thing. I just realized my camera's crooked. My, but my lighting is spectacular. I like it. The second guy died of the same thing, acute interstitial pneumonia. But I pulled out his kidney just as a just as a nice little artifact. It's this beautiful modeling pattern. You can even see little gas bubbles. All of this is just an incidental finding. This kidney is autolyzed or is uh, deteriorating here in the hot summer heat. <laughs> so yeah, two interstitial pneumonias. <laughs> so you want to be a cow vet? Anybody tell you about the flies? Flies aren't bad. It's the maggots that'll get you. So I know I've talked about it in the vlog before and I know that I've certainly answered it several times in Q&A, but I just thought that I would do a little bit of rundown on the post-mortem process and why I do it. Mainly because over the last month I've got several thousand new followers, uh, so I just kind of want to keep everybody on the same page. One of the vlogs titled A Cow Vet and His GoPro, all of a sudden it popped on YouTube and I got tons and tons and tons of comments and people just not understanding why I do post-mortems. Like they, there was a lot of people, here I'm gonna stop. 
there was a ton of people that just couldn't rationalize what I do in the post-mortem pit. Like, some people thought that I was this insane man that was just showing up and slashing cows for pure pleasure. While I do enjoy a good post-mortem, uh, that's not the whole story. So, I'm a cattle veterinarian and part of that is determining cause of death. Same happens in every single species, including humans. We want to find out why animals or humans die so we can prevent further deaths in the future. So when I do a post-mortem, that, that diagnosis is helping me guide a couple different things. The first thing is, is there anything I can do on a pen level to help mitigate disease or death? And also on a protocol level, is there anything I can do in terms of vaccinations or treatments or or management or nutrition that can help improve the health and welfare of both the cattle in the feedlot that that animal came from, but from a global perspective as well. Across all of my feedlots, there's information to be garnered through the data that would allow me to make protocol changes. So that's why I do postmortems. It's not not some crazy guy. Well, I'm kind of crazy. You know. I'm just gonna stop by quick at one of the hospitals. I don't have anything to do there. But I got a couple of text messages from one of the, the senior pen rider that uh, they had a feedlot baby born and he's been giving it little bottles and it's the cutest little baby ever and I just have to see it. Feedlot babies, they're little orphans, they're the most adorable. Face, <laughs> look at your little face. He drank. I saw, look at your little eyelashes. Seriously. Oh, look at your little eyelash. I know, right? You're so funny. Are, are you a little pre premature? Yes, you are. You're a little creamy. bite him and rub my face all over his head. So he was just born and I just gave them some colostrum out of my truck and they'll dose him up with some colostrum and he's gonna go home. Well, not like his home because his home's a feedlot pen. But he's gonna go home with somebody and he'll be a little bottle baby. And, and then he'll end up back at a feedlot one day. The circle of life. Okay, so what I found was partial paresis, and I did notice a swelling in the lumbar area, likely due to an injury. Uh, without further diagnostics, I cannot tell if that is a break or a slip disc, uh, but I talked to the feedlot manager, and we're gonna enact an emergency slaughter on this animal, so we will euthanize, and the meat will be put to good use. Uh, with animals, of course, it's always about the quality of life, not quantity of life, and consider that when we're considering a treatment plan. If I were to go ahead to 
to treat, I would put on a course of dexamethasone over the next three days and we would see if there was any response. With that degree of paresis, uh, it's kind of a long shot. So I do have treatment options, but what's best for the animal is best for the animal. So we'll go ahead and do emergency slaughter. Yeah. All right, my last thing to do for today is a uh, export to the European Union. The cows don't go, their meat, their meat goes. It's called tariff-free quota system. I inspect them, and then they go. Hey, fatty, 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 fatty. Oh, look at you. First pen. Done. Second pen, now.